Do you enjoy doing that activity? Do you like going to Home Depot? Do you like managing the property? Do you like drywalling? Do you like looking at the internet? Hey, if you like it, keep doing it. The next column is the second most important column. Can you get somebody else to do it? Now I use this example of uh, Bill Gates, I've met him twice, and by the way, he's the only person I've ever met that can talk on two cell phones at once. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. He had two cell phones doing two conversations at once. How does his brain work? <clears throat> okay. Anyway, Bill Gates, if he ran Microsoft like you and I run our real estate business, because you and I love to do everything, what do we love to do? So let's take Bill for a minute using our <coughs> management model for real estate. If you called Microsoft, who'd answer the phone? Bill Gates. Because who answers your phone? Yeah. Right? So Bill would answer the phone. You order a computer. Who'd put the computer together? Bill. Because what do we all do? All the repair <coughs> work. Right? Who would do the bookkeeping and accounting at Microsoft? Bill. Because what do we love to do? Who'd set up all the legal entities and figure out all the legal questions and contracts? Bill. Because what do we love to do? Same thing. Who do the bookkeeping, accounting, uh, uh, shipping, uh, receiving, customer service at Microsoft? Bill, because that's how we run our business. What do we love to do? Everything. And we won't hire anybody because we know they'll never do as good a job as us. Is that true? Absolutely. <coughs> Let me say that again. I'm going to tell you to hire managers to put people on your team. I don't mean pay them. I mean as the money comes in, they get a part of it. I'm not saying get an overhead. but. The reason we won't hire a manager or a lawyer or anybody is they'll never do as good a job as me. Is that true? Yes. Absolutely, in most cases. But you know what? If they do 70%, what does that free you up? 100%. Yeah, you've lost 10, 20, 30% of inefficiency or caring or whatever, but what have you, free, what have you gotten? 100% of your time back. What does Bill Gates do? Well, he talks on two phones at once. He's pretty busy. Uh, but what does he do? He went and found the best computer guy, the best engineers, the best salespeople. By the way, you want to know the true story about how Bill Gates started? Huh? How he made his first business. Flipped it. What did he do? He went to, I forgot, what was it uh, IBM? And said to IBM, what would you pay for this operating system? They said, oh, that operates a I will pay a million dollars. Bill was like 20-something years old. He had a, a couple guys with him. They walked out of the meeting. Guess what they said? Bill, you're out of your mind. We don't have that operating system. It doesn't exist. Bill did a reverse flip. Guess what he did? He went out and hired a bunch of people for a couple hundred grand. They almost didn't make it. They, they, they missed the deadline. They created it, went to IBM, and said, here it is. And wait a minute. What does that tell us about our business? Guess what I always do before I sell a piece of property? Find the buyer first. How do you reduce your risk? Find the buyer first. How did I flip that condo in Miami? I found a rap guy who said, Robert, I've got cash. I want to buy a condo for X amount of dollars, and here's what it needs to be. I said, fantastic. I've got one. Did I have one? Yes, I did. In my mind, I know there's condos in Miami that would fit this need. Right? So guess what I did? I called 94 NFs and I found one. They exist, right? Find the buyer first, especially in today's market, okay? Now, I just produced a record I played uh, for some of y'all before he came in. Some of y'all know Verena who works with me. I produced a record. I took a risk. It cost $30,000, $40,000 to produce it, studio time. Did I take a risk? Did I take a risk? Yeah. Absolutely not. I don't take risks. Information reduces risk. What reduces risk? We went to Sony Records and said, hey, listen to a little bit of this thing. What do you think? They said, oh, man, that's great. We'll buy that for X amount of dollars. What did I do? Flipped it. I don't take risks. People in real estate take tremendous risks. What reduces risk? Information. Guess what's going to reduce your risk today? Information. I very rarely put someone under contract, even contingent contract, without what? I'll give you another example. Now, uh, I've done a lot of real estate in Vegas, Huntsville, Alabama. Okay, people say, wow, that's risky. How do you know if someone's going to be able to rent it? How do we know someone's going to rent that stuff? Guess what we did before we got the property? 
We ran ads. It's called a test. We ran ads in Huntsville saying, hey, three bedroom, two baths. We thought the rent was $2,200. we are not sure. We put in there, you know, about $2,500. Guess what happened? Phone rang off the hook. So guess what we decided to do? Didn't believe it. Verified it. Went around to other property managers, made phone calls. You have anything to rent? No, we're full, man. We have some three bedrooms and go like that. Is that good information? Absolutely. Is that risky? No. Now, we didn't expect for the biggest real estate downturn since 1929 to occur, so it's affected us a little bit, but not horribly, because we got information. What are you going to get before you make a decision? Are you going to worry about it? Are you going to stress about it? Are you going to have false expectations? Gather information. How many of y'all like that approach? 